Looks like Nintendo is making some news finally this year. Boy, has it been some time since we've heard anything from the Nintendo camp. Uh, there's a rumor going around on the internet that Nintendo is very soon going to unveil their next iteration of the wildly popular Nintendo Switch console, including the ability to take games and potentially up-res them to as high as 4K. I've seen a uh, 60 frame per second across pretty much every first party title being touted as well. I've also seen a additional battery capabilities on top of the existing battery capabilities that we have seen already in the repackaged Nintendo Switch. Um, this isn't new for Nintendo to make these kind of mid-season upgrades and it really did become significantly much more popular with the PlayStation 4 going to the Pro variant and the Xbox One going to the S and then later to the X variant as well. But Nintendo has always done this first and with limited success. And that's, I think, what worries me the most about this potential mid-season upgrade. Uh, think back to the N64, wildly popular console, one that I sadly sold and I do regret selling, but I was young, I didn't have a job, and I really wanted that PlayStation, so I got rid of my N64. But if I still had it, I'm sure I'd probably find a use to play it every now and then. Anyways, if you guys recall, the N64 eventually, about halfway through its cycle, released the expansion pack, which was bundled with some games, which did increase the onboard RAM of the console, which it's hysterical because I actually looked it up. And... Um, it uh, doubled, doubled the onboard RAM from four megabits to eight megabits, just to give you an idea of how little RAM uh, the technology had back then. It was, like I said, it was bundled with some games. Um, and the idea was that it was supposed to make games run smoother and faster and not necessarily a requirement. It's not like if you put a game in, it wouldn't work, but the idea was it was gonna be better. And in my experience and, and thinking back to those times, and I was a lot younger and then using YouTube more recently because my memory isn't what it used to be, I can honestly say I don't think that expansion pack really did a whole lot. Um, sure, I'm sure there were very distinct instances where you could snapshot a small piece of gameplay and say, hey, look, the frame rate is better, or the resolution is slightly better, or the draw distance is slightly better. But the reality is graphics didn't really look that great back then. It's honestly very difficult to go back and look at the original Ocarina of Time because it just looks so bad. The frame rate constantly dropped you know, below 15, 20 frames a second consistently. GoldenEye was almost the same way. Very poor resolution. We didn't know better at the time, but the resolution was very poor and the frame rate was very poor. The expansion pack didn't do a whole lot. Nintendo had another chance at this again uh, more recently with the Wii, not the Wii U, the original Wii. If you guys recall, um, a couple years into the console launch, they released the Wii Mote Plus, and this was supposed to be an additional expansion pack you plugged on the bottom of your Wiimote. So it was instead of, I don't know, like this long, it suddenly became this long. Uh, it came bundled with a particular game, had the new jacket on it to try to fit it all in. And, and the idea was that this was gonna give you even better accuracy. The gyroscope was gonna be much more accurate. It was gonna allow for significant better depth of field and that sort of thing. And honestly, I had so many problems with that, I quit using it. Um, it constantly lost sync. It had to be rebalanced. Basically, you had to set it down on a table and then t not touch it for like five seconds, which in the middle of a gameplay constantly got incredibly frustrating. It seemed to lose its tracking very quickly. Um, if, you were, if you ever had your other hand obstructing it, not that you would play games like this per se, but if you were playing and you kind of like rested your hands down a little bit and the remote wasn't facing directly at the television sensor, you know, that bar you put underneath the, the TV there, um, it seemed to lose sync. The point is, is that Nintendo has done this in the past with very limited success. I'll give you another great example, uh, the Nintendo 3DS. Um, the Nintendo 3DS came out and they hyped up Pilot Wings, one of my absolute favorite games with uh, the Pilot Wings um, remote island. Uh, what was it called? Wahoo Island. 
if you remember, you could sail around on different airplanes and the 3DS had this capability that would give you 3D field of depth without using 3D glasses, which actually worked really, really well, all things considered. Um, unfortunately, it didn't really get a lot of support, although it did work well. There weren't a whole lot of games to utilize that technology. And um, then they started on the 3DL, 3DS XL, which was supposed to be a bigger screen, better processor. And once again, you're seeing the same thing. So what I'm saying is that Nintendo does have a history of doing this. Um, that's why when I heard this news about the Switch, I'm reserved on it. Um, it has nothing to do with um, the performance of the old games, because I think for the most part, the Nintendo Switch games run for about honestly as good as you can expect. I did find some pretty significant hiccups in my particular playthrough of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, there were a lot of times that, whether docked or undocked, um, I would notice performance hitches. Um, I think everybody can agree uh, Link's Awakening was run very poorly. It had a significant amount of frame rate hitches there. And then even on the indie side, I'll go ahead and throw out one of my absolute favorite games, Dead Cells which struggles to keep a pretty consistent frame rate. And that is not using the unlocked frame setting. That's locking it down to 30 frames or less. And um, a lot of times it's or less. So the Nintendo has always struggled, but I think that was the trade space that the Nintendo Switch decided to make. We're gonna make a portable console that's gonna have a really cool screen with these interesting Joy-Cons on the side at the trade-off of actual you know, chassis space to put in tech. Makes sense. I mean, I knew what I was getting into. I'm not, you know, I wasn't frustrated per se saying, you know, how dare they, you know, not provide me with the latest and greatest and why is this not rivaling the PlayStation 4 Pro or the Xbox One X? I understood that. Um, it's a very basic device that doesn't have a ton of unique processing power to it. And Nintendo's done a really good job to mask that. I think Mario Odyssey is a phenomenal game. It looks beautiful. It plays beautifully. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, another phenomenal experience. And even Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, phenomenal experience. But you do see hiccups in games like Pokemon and all the other games that I mentioned. So looking at this, you know, from those other examples I gave, do we really need a Nintendo Switch Pro, for lack of a better word? And I, I think the answer is no. Um, I would love to see Nintendo push the boundaries and say, hey, look, we are developing Metroid Prime 4 with this game in mind or Breath of the Wild 2 with this in mind. But the reality is Nintendo is doing the same thing that they've always done. They're saturating their own market with multiple variants of the same console. We've already seen the launch Nintendo Switch, the one that I was lucky enough to pick up uh, at launch in the New York store in Nintendo. Uh, I'm sorry, the N Nintendo store in New York. Um, I still use that console today. I absolutely love it. Very cool a personal experience for me being part of that. But since then, they have released a newer edition that has a better battery. We've also seen the um, smaller variants that uh, have the Joy-Cons that are kind of like baked into the chassis. Um, and now you're talking about yet another variant. So you're potentially going to release a Switch game. You know, let's say that they decide that the new games are optimized for the Switch Pro. You're gonna put Nintendo Switch on the box and you're gonna now have to support three separate different pieces of hardware in order to get an optimal experience. And as we've seen before, that doesn't necessarily work out very well. So I think as excited as people may be for, oh great, a new Switch is coming, I would hold off on that. If they wanna make an entirely new platform and retire the Nintendo Switch and say, we are done with this piece of hardware, now moving on to something entirely new. Whether or not games are backwards compatible, whether or not um, your peripherals work, whatever. That's a separate conversation. If you're gonna take an existing Nintendo Switch and do something to it and the Switch 1.5, I think that's very divisive. And based on what I've seen in the past, Nintendo does not execute that plan very well. I'm a little worried about that. Um, now, this is rumored not to come out until 2021. We might have a much better picture about how things are going to be. Obviously, Nintendo is going to be doing some significant marketing, if that is the case, if this is the route that they choose to take. But I guess I just caution everybody to say, you know, 
keep in mind Nintendo's previous track record with this. It, it's not very good. And I'm all about better games. I'm all about better graphics, no doubt about it. But um, I'm afraid that when they start developing with this new console in mind, you're going to basically take the existing consoles and decrease their their value very significantly. So don't get too excited on this. Keep that in mind as you kind of read the news and see what actually manifests from this. But everything I've said seems to indicate that this is a very real thing and it will be happening a lot sooner than we thought. Leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts on what's going on with Nintendo. Are you excited for a Nintendo Pro or are you happy with the one that you have? Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.